I think that you know your work is so provocative and, and seeing it seeing it large and, and really in your face kind of really really drove that home um, and the thing that really stood out is you know this this polished really clean really synthetic mm. world that you've created what draws you to that kind of world um i was interested i'm kind of interested in visually what's communicated immediately and i like the idea that seeing my work for the first time just a frame of it you get like Barbie, kind of Disney princess and all these connotations that are really just quite immediate. But then you continue to watch the work and, you know, the content and what happens just introduces these darker, more critical elements into it. And I think I'm interested in criticising that aesthetic and kind of where it comes from, this idea of little girls kind of dreaming to be princesses when they grow up. But also I'm interested in the challenge of saying, take this seriously. So instead of just looking at pink stuff and thinking, oh, that's silly, it's frivolous. You look at it and you think, well, oh, I'm being challenged to take this seriously. So that's I'm kind of playing with both things, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Two themes really stuck out to me in, in the film. Um, the themes of, of consumption mm. and of control, the way mm. that we, we apply both to ourselves mm -hmm. and, and to others. Um, how have these two themes kind of shaped your life and, and your practice as an artist? Um, I suppose in lots of ways. I think there's things, uh, something I've been thinking about in making the film is the kind of secret things that women, I guess, all experience, but it's not something that's necessarily externalised. And I think food is one of those things where, you know, so many women, I'd say almost all women, have some kind of anxiety around food or have had some experience with food that's not entirely healthy and that's just this kind of internalised level of control. And I'm interested in... You know, when I was growing up, there was a sense that you were supposed to take these things as your problem rather than externalising them. And I'm thinking about how you politicise ideas, say, around food, and you make it about thinking about the kind of larger kind of political um, environment that causes you to feel that way rather than everything having to be about your own sort of individualistic um, anxieties or problems. And I think in my experience, I find that discovering feminism made my life so much better. Mm -hmm. It really like it really helped me with so much of the anxiety you have around body image, around the way you feel you're supposed to look. And mm -hmm. I I think that I was kind of interested in yeah, externalizing some of these kind of mm -hmm. private things that women mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. this is what you're saying there as well is that I it sounds almost like feminism was a thing that gave you a sense of community and made you feel less isolated with these problems. And I think that in, in the film, it was amazing to see, and absurd in some mm. ways, to see all the women sitting and eating nothing together. It makes you realise yeah. we all practice these yeah. behaviours, these inherited behaviours from our culture, yeah. and we're all doing it. Yeah, and I think it's the extent that you're trained not to question mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was interesting in the film, you kind of start with this group of women, and I think women are trained to compete with each other. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're introduced to the idea that they're competing and they're part of a kind of structured competition. And as the film goes on, it's almost like the kind of camaraderie grows between them. Um, and I'm interested in that, the kind of camaraderie between women and female friendships and the importance of that and mm -hmm. almost overriding the sense that women are trained to compete with each other for men or male attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the film made me think of a particular quote by John Berger about um, women in art being mm. there to feed an appetite, not to yeah. have um, an appetite of our own. Um, how do you think that art, and particularly women's art, can, can challenge or kind of default to cater to the male gaze? Yeah, I mean, I think it's like a challenge as yeah. a female artist because so much of the control of women happens in visual media mm -hmm. and to try and pick that apart and de deconstruct it is a complex thing and I think partly making art is working through that and I realise that there's this complication where you don't want to abandon the things that seem like systems of control so you might say makeup is a level of control or you might say kind of this princess sort of idealistic world is a level of control and that would be true but do you just abandon that and start dressing like a man or mm -hmm. making work that looks male? Mm -hmm. Or do you complicate it and mm -hmm. kind of mess it up mm -hmm. a bit? And I'm kind of more in that sense of believing that there's something complicated that can come out of mm -hmm. this where the character in the film, Siri, kind of uses makeup 
as a way out. So she almost uses the thing that's controlling her as a way out. So I think that there's, it's not black and white, there's other routes through it and that's kind of what you've got to grapple with as mm -hmm. a female artist. Um, so this was obviously your, your first feature length film, which is just, just incredible. And I think we've all been blown away by watching it tonight. So of course we're all wondering, what, what are you working on now? What's next for you? Yeah, well, a few things. I, I'd love to make another feature film, and I've learned so much. I feel like, yeah, okay, I could really, I could do this again, and I could make things better. <laughs> um, and also, I'm working on a few exhibitions and sort of shorter films, and I, I'm at the moment really interested in this place between the art world and film. Mm -hmm. And I think there's things that you get from both worlds that are really exciting. And I, I think artistically, I always like having, yeah, having a foot in different worlds. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So what's next for Make Me Up? Um, so I'm showing Make Me Up's having its premiere in London at London Film Festival on the 12th of October. And um, then it's showing after that in November uh, on the BBC. So that's really exciting.